couple of weeks ago on the program, we talked about how former aides and advisors to Bernie Sanders have decided to form a pro-Joe Biden super PAC, where they will not only try to persuade members of the left to support Joe Biden, but they'll also be attempting to push Joe Biden to the left. Yeah. How's that working out for you guys so far? Now, I found this absolutely repulsive, obviously, because this is a slap in the face to Bernie Sanders. He founded his campaign on a new fundraising model, right? He transformed the way that politicians raise money. There are dozens of members of Congress who are not taking any super PAC money, who are rejecting donations from large multinational corporations. They're doing it the way that he did it, raising money by individual small grassroots donations. Bernie Sanders changed the game. And so for members of his own team to do this, it's just, it's grotesque. It shows us that they were never really in this because they believed in Bernie Sanders' message. They were in this because they're career-minded. They were only looking out for themselves. They were opportunists. And, you know, this included individuals like Jeff Weaver, Chuck Roca, Mark Longabaugh. And, you know, I was wondering what Bernie Sanders thought about this. He couldn't have been happy, right? And his uh, press spokesperson, Mike Casca, almost immediately denounced the super PAC, saying... We're not associated with this. But we got a little bit of um, inside information about how Bernie Sanders feels because a Vice article by Cameron Joseph explains that Bernie Sanders was not happy. And he actually got them to change the name because he doesn't want people to think that this super PAC is associated with him because the name of the super PAC is a future to believe in PAC. So they literally stole Bernie's 2016 campaign message, and they're using it for a pro-corporate Democrat super PAC, where they can raise unlimited sums of dark money for Joe Biden. Like, this is disgusting. So Bernie wasn't happy, and according to this article, he uh, was using some uh, quote-unquote colorful language to explain his feelings. So Joseph explains, when a bunch of Bernie staffers formed a super PAC name-checking his old slogan, A Future to Believe In, he was none too pleased given his well-known hatred of groups that skirt campaign finance limits. So they changed the name. The group will now be known as America's Promise PAC. The change was filed with the Federal Election Commission on Tuesday. We wanted to be as clear as possible that there is no association between the PAC and the Senator, Super PAC head and Sanders advisor, Jeff Weaver told Vice News. Weaver launched the group in late April with a number of other Sanders alumni shortly after Sanders dropped out of the presidential race and endorsed Joe Biden. Their stated goal? To help elect Joe Biden to the presidency while pushing his policies to the left. But Sanders has also spent the better part of his career crusading against the millionaires and billionaires looking to buy political power and had a particular ire for super PACs which can accept unlimited sums from individuals and corporations. Sanders hammered his opponents for taking help from super PACs during the 2016 and 2020 primaries and by all accounts he was rather furious when he found out some of his top advisors had decided to move ahead with one. The senator was informed about the creation of the super PAC before the paperwork was filed and he was not happy about it, Sanders political spokesman Mike Casca told Vice News. Numerous other Sanders staff used more colorful language to describe Sanders' reaction to the group. He didn't authorize it, he doesn't like super PACs, and doesn't want it to exist, said one senior former Sanders staffer familiar with Sanders' feelings about the group. Bernie's pissed off, said another. Okay, so I stand corrected. I guess that um, it was his staffers who were using more colorful language. I got excited at the prospect of Bernie possibly cussing, and I guess I was wrong there. I jumped the gun, but according to them, he didn't authorize it, he doesn't like super PACs, and he doesn't want it to exist. Um, and he was furious. Bernie's pissed off. So, I mean, this is obvious, right? The fact that they would do this, I mean, it's so transparent. Now that Bernie's not going to run for president again, they're looking for some other way to advance their careers. And you can't necessarily be successful in the Democratic Party, you know, apparatus in that establishment, in that circle, if you were against the establishment, right? You've got to prove to them that you're loyal. And this is basically what they're doing. This is about optics. Is this actually going to be a successful attempt to lure Sanders supporters into supporting Joe Biden? Of course not. Of course not. Um, and second of all, you're not going to get Joe Biden to go further left by running a super PAC that, what, advertises campaign television ads? 
How is that going to persuade Joe Biden? Are you going to market ads specifically tailored to Joe Biden? Do you hope he sees the ads? Like, what is the point? Like, this is a fraudulent organization, right? It's all just a political theater. They know this isn't going to be successful. They know it's not going to convince anyone to support Joe Biden, especially with the way that they're doing it. This is all about them looking out for their own asses and hopefully getting a job in D.C. in the future after they just ran with an anti-establishment politician who the establishment was very much against. So I'm glad that Bernie Sanders um, got them to change the name. The fact that they used his name from the beginning, I, I think it's just unacceptable. What were they thinking? Like, were they expecting him to think this was a good idea? Why would they use his name? Like, if you're going to sell out, because this is what they're doing, they're selling out. If you're going to sell out, then why would you appropriate what Bernie Sanders used as his 2016 slogan when Bernie Sanders, the man himself, is against super PACs? Like, how low are you willing to go for a career in D.C.? So, look, I'm glad that Bernie Sanders condemned this and spoke out. Um, I think that publicly he should have made a statement, although since this is technically a super PAC, um, they're not supporting him. But I don't know if legally he's allowed to condemn it publicly. But I will say Bernie Sanders has absolutely got to distance himself from Jeff Weaver because from everything that we know based on, you know, internal um things that have come up, people who volunteered for Bernie Sanders and worked closely with him. I mean, Jeff Weaver was running the show, and even though Faz Shakir was Bernie's campaign manager, everything kind of went through Jeff Weaver in a way. He was really pulling the strings behind the scenes. So, you know, Bernie, he's not going to run for president again, but just morally speaking, I think he is obligated to distance himself from Jeff Weaver. You've seen now firsthand, Bernie, that he's not looking out for you. He doesn't align with you politically. He has a different agenda than you do. And I think the smart thing to do so it doesn't, you know, poison your image politically is um, distance yourself from him. Fire him. Get rid of him. Because here's the thing. Bernie Sanders, I'm assuming, will remain in the Senate for years to come. And you want to make sure that you're able to maintain a pretty large amount of influence and that influence comes from millions of people across the country who trust you who trust your authenticity and who don't believe you are you know um, motivated by anything other than helping the american people and with people who are working for you like jeff weaver i mean there's going to be a question always whether or not Bernie is doing something because he believes in it or whether his misstep is just a genuine misstep or because Jeff Weaver is the one who kind of misled him, right? We already know, according to some people who work with Bernie Sanders, who were surrogates, that Jeff Weaver basically shot down ideas of what Bernie should have done to appeal to black people, for example, investing in black media. That's awful advice. Awful, awful advice. So Jeff Weaver has misled Bernie Sanders before and, you know, in the future, we're going to need Bernie Sanders in this fight. He's not going to run for president again, but we still need him. So to distance yourself from people like Jeff Weaver assures us that you're going to be committed and you're not going to make some of the boneheaded decisions that you made before. Um, also, there's talk that Jeff Weaver is the one who influenced Bernie Sanders to not go negative against Joe Biden, which was possibly one of the biggest reasons why he lost, aside from the media bias. So, you know, going forward, Bernie has got to distance himself from Jeff Weaver. This is someone who's a grifter. And, you know, you've got to understand that from Bernie's perspective, him and Jeff Weaver have worked together for decades. So there's some loyalty there. You know, Bernie Sanders is a very loyal person. But what matters ultimately at the end of the day is where Jeff Weaver's priorities lie. And if his priorities are very much not aligned with yours, then you can't trust that individual's judgment and you've got to distance yourself from him. There are phenomenal people who you can hire as one of your advisors. David Sirota is one of them. Brianna Joy Gray, Nina Turner. I mean, you have so many options. There's no reason why you would stay close with Jeff Weaver, someone who has now just pulled the mask off. He's not in this for the policies. He's in this for, you know, the job opportunity, you know, increasing his power in D.C. So you've got to also take this a step further, Bernie, and distance yourself from him entirely. Because if you don't disassociate with him, then this is undermining everything that you've been fighting for throughout the course of your career. So um, you've got to not have him as your top advisor, you know, uh, sever that tie and move on from him because he is a bad influence on you.